Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another JBDC virtual gift and craft biz zone. Gift and craft industry recently um, saw the launch of the Jamaica gift and craft policy of which JBDC is the key implementing agency in ensuring that the policy is in fact implemented and that we bring together all our key partners and stakeholders in the dialogue and implementation process. In developing the policy, a number of issues were identified when engaging the stakeholders, one of which was intellectual property. And of course, JBDC has quite a number of friends out there in the ecosystem supporting the micro, small, and medium enterprises. And one of our key partners, of course, is Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, the persons with all the knowledge and expertise in the area of intellectual property and company law in general. And we invite you all to take a visit and ensure that you get very, very close to JIPO and ensure that you are learning all about all you need to learn about protecting your property rights and all the other related topics that will be covered over the next few weeks. So today we have with us a special guest and I will now introduce her. We have presenting to us today Ms. Chantel English. She is a creative, innovative, and passionate attorney at law. She is the Copyright and Related Rights Manager at the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. She's also an author and served as adjunct tutor at the University of the West Indies Faculty of Law. Her love and passion for law is fulsome. She has a strong passion for real property, intellectual property law, and company law. And she has also conducted and presented at legal seminars on diverse matters of the law. She is a past student of the Queen's School, the University of West Indies, and the Norman Manley Law School. She is a board advisor for a youth-led organization, I Aspire International, Youth President and Deputy Superintendent of Sunday School in her community church and Guide Commissioner for Guide Section of the Girl Guide Association of Jamaica. Chantal is also a motivational speaker, so we look forward to a very delightful and engaging presentation today because you know it's the law, so we need a little bit of creativity in there, Chantal. <laughs> <laughs> And she is advisor and is actively involved in community development where she displays her passion for youth development. She spends most of her time writing, volunteering, researching, and making a difference in the lives of others. Today, we welcome you, Chantal, as our presenter, and we hope that our participants will enjoy and learn and be very engaging. At the end of the presentation, we will open the discussion for question and answer. And we have our guided co-host, Ms. Sansia Campbell, to lead us into that section. So Chantal, I now hand over to you. Thank you so much, Janine, and thank you so much for having me this morning. Uh, let me just um, proceed to sharing my screen. All right. So again, thank you for the invitation. We appreciate it for the, here at JIPO for the special invitation. No. intellectual property is everywhere from the headphone that Janine is wearing, from the very minute that we wake in the morning, we are thinking about intellectual property. We get up out of our bed, intellectual property is in our room. We turn on our light, intellectual property. We take a shower, intellectual property. So intellectual property is very diverse. And so this morning, I hope to have a fulsome discussion of the intellectual property areas. Okay. Right. Trying to change sides. Having a little challenge changing here. So, right. So before I go into the presentation, I want to give a little history of JIPO. So the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office is an agency of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. Uh, JIPO was established in 2001 by the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. 
and came and started her body in 2002. Jaipal is responsible for administering intellectual property laws in Jamaica for public education, which is what I'm doing here today, registration of trademarks, designs, patents, geographical indications, also voluntary deposit of copyright, and working with interest group. And later on, I'll say exactly why I said use the word voluntary for copyright. Intellectual property rights give the right owner the right to compensation for infringement for their work. It also prevents unauthorized use of work, as well as it gives the right holder an exclusive right to use and to control their intellectual property. So when we look at intellectual property, we're looking at different branches. So intellectual property is divided in three main branches, uh, the probably most commonly known for most persons would have been industrial property, which covers designs, patents, trademarks, geographical indications, and there's also copyright and related rights, as well as traditional knowledge. Now, when we look at industrial property, industrial property covers designs, patents, trademarks, and GIs. Now, that little information on each, because for this presentation, I'll be speaking a lot on copyright, designs, and trademarks. So designs, designs protect the shape or three-dimensional article. And you'd see a picture here of a vase. A patent protects new inventions. Trademarks protect names and symbols or logos that denote the origin of goods and services. And you'll see the pepper, which will be reflective of island grill. Geographical indications protect signs used on goods that have a specific geographical origin and possesses qualities reputation or characteristics that are essentially attributed to that place of origin. And you will see our good Jamaican room, which again represents us as Jamaican. So we are, as a Jamaican society, we are very creative. And so we're always encouraged to do something creative every day, even without thinking about it, Jamaicans are creative. So, I was told earlier, or well, I heard Jenny saying earlier that, you know, she hoped that I'll come with something creative. Well, actually, I did a poem for you guys. So it says, Jamaica, Jamaica, Yemen, from our lyrics to our craft and our slogans. Jamaica, Jamaica, our creative land. We create our mask and our inventions. Worldwide, we are champions. With our TKs and our GIs, our white rum, jerk chicken and jerk pork, not to mention our dopey stories, our bush remedies, and our folklores. When we look around, we see Jamaicans. We are Jamaicans, the creative land. All right, so that was just a little bit. Of, I wrote this yesterday for the presentation. So just a little bit of covering IP in terms of copyright, trademarks, uh, patent, T TK, GIs. Right. So what is copyright? Section 6.1 of the Copyright Act of Jamaica defines copyright as a property right. This legal right allows the creators of creative works to reproduce, distribute, perform, adapt, and communicate or make available to the public those works. Copyright protects the following categories of work. There is literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic work, sound recordings, films, cable programs, broadcasts, the third category, typographical arrangements of public edition. Now, copyright is automatic. So once the work is created, you receive automatic protection. For the first categories of work, which is literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic work, it is to protect, the term of protection is for the life of the author plus 95 years after death. For the second category, sound recordings, films, cable programs, and broadcasts is 95 years after publication. And for the third category, which is typographical arrangements of public editions is 50 years from the date of publication. So we have literary works, which would include words spoken in a written, written material. So we're talking about our books, uh, lyrics from songs. Then we look at musical works, which include scores or our annotations. So we think about um, our rhythms or instrumentals. Dramatic includes dance and mimes, 
uh, artistic painting sculptures, technical drawings, photographs, diagrams, and buildings. So there are certain rights attached to your work as a creator. So you have a moral right, and that moral right is the right to be identified as the author of the work, and also not to have your work treated in a derogatory manner, and not to have a work falsely attributed to you. So that is your moral right, and you also have an economic right. And the economic right gives you the right to copy the work, to issue the work to the public, to perform the work, to play the work, to broadcast the work, to make an adaptation of the work. And by making an adaptation of the work, it's transferring the work from one format to the other. So say, for instance, you have a book, you can transform that into a movie or film, right? So that is taking it from one form to the other and also making the work available on the internet. As it relates to artistic work, must going to have a little focus here, given the audience that we have this morning. So artistic work, a graphic work, a graphic work, photograph, sculpture, or collage, where the work is of artistic quality or not, a building or a model of a building, whether the building or model is of artistic quality or not, or any work of craftsmanship that is not listed within one of those categories. All right. So at JIPO, we have, I said earlier that copyright is automatic. So it means that there is no formal registration system, but what we offer here at JIPO is a voluntary registration system of that copyright, which is automatic. So in order to access this system, uh, applicants will be required to complete an application form and a declaration form. They would need to submit to us the copy of their work, right? A copy of their work as well as their ID and those, the application form and the declaration form must be, your signature must be witnessed by the justice of the peace. And this is you declaring that you, this, the work that you're producing to us is your work. And that you are the author and or the creator of the work that you're depositing with us. So that's about copyright. So we're going to move a little bit now into designs. So design, an industrial design is the ornamental or aesthetic aspect of an article. The design may consist of three-dimensional features such as the shape, shape or surface of an article or two-dimensional features such as patterns, lines, or color. A design lasts for 15 years and is non-renewable. Industrial designs are applicable to a wide variety of products of, in, products of the industry and handicraft from technical and medical instruments to watches, jewelries, and other luxury items. From housewares and electrical appliances to vehicles and architectural structures, from textile designs to ledger goods. Industrial designs are what make an article attractive and appealing, hence they add to the commercial value of the product and increase its marketability. So you see this very attractive, um, bracelet here. And these are some other um, designs and we would be quite familiar with the original Coca-Cola bottle. Very small at the top and big at the bottom. We have other designs. We have a little bracelet, a necklace, a shoe, a special design in the chair. Right. Protecting an industrial design. When an industrial design is protected, the owner, the person or entity that has registered the design is assured an exclusive right against unauthorized copying or imitation of the design by third parties. So again, as I spoke earlier about the exclusive rights to the owner of the work, it's also applicable here uh, for, well, for, all in, for all intellectual property rights. You have an exclusive right to use and to control the use of your work. Protecting your design also benefit consumers and the public by promoting fair competition, honest trade practices, encouraging creativity, and promoting a more aesthetic, aesthetically attractive products. An industrial design can be relatively simple or inexpensive to develop and protect. You know, many times persons would say, oh, but it's just a little watch or just a little bracelet. No, we're not looking at your, your creation as just a little. So 
whatever or however you are creative, we encourage you to continue to be creative, right? Regardless of how simple it may be or how inexpe inexpensive it may be, you are protected under law once you have well, once you have that creation out. So Julie, they are also reasonably accessible to small and medium-sized enterprises as well as the individuals, artists, and craftsmen in both industrialized and developed countries. So the process for registration of designs, you have a complete application form. Uh, you must state the claim for newness or novelty of that design, uh, which is not previously published in Jamaica. Select the class in which the goods will fall under. Application Applicant's name and address, registration fee for design is 1,500. But I must pause to say that on January 23rd, 2020, we, um, Parliament passed a new patent and design law. And so this will, in effect, alter this, um, change this new fee. So we encourage persons, which would be an increase. So we encourage persons who have their designs to, to, um, <laughs> to make way to Jaipo as soon as possible before this law comes into force. It was passed, it's not yet in force, and if the fees will, will, will increase. So we encourage persons to take the opportunity to come visit our office or call the office to get further information in terms of you know, registration of your design. And as I said, the fee currently is $1,500. Uh, you have to also present a representation of the design and it is examined by JIPO and then proceed for registration. Okay, so that was design. So we're looking also at trademarks because I know that we have a number of persons here this morning who may be a part of um, small businesses. And so I, I also believe that it's important for us to uh, have an overview or have a discussion as it relates to, to trademarks. So trademarks are distinguished signs or symbols, including names, logos, shapes, colors, odors, and sounds. And so for persons who have a special name for their business, we encourage you to come to Jaipo and also to register that business name, right? So trademark is applied to the owner's products or services to distinguish them from like competitors. And so there will, it would prevent, a, right? So registration of mark makes it easier to prove ownership and to prevent competitors from copying uh, your mark. Different from earlier trademarks for similar products or services, your trademark is your central brand or identity. So whenever you see uh, this logo on screen, you will know it is Jaipo. And as I was saying before, it can be a combination of you have colors, letters, numbers, but for Jaipo, we have the letters and colors and symbols. A trademark person sometimes asks, uh, do I have to register a trademark? Um, answer is no formal registration is required uh, because you are protected by common law, common law passing off. But again, we encourage registration, right? And reg formal registration is done at JIPO. Uh, registration values for 10 years and it renewable indefinitely. So after every 10 years, you'll have to renew that trademark. Um, it's also protected by the Trademark Act against any subsequent identical or similar registration. Unregistered trademark infringement. In order to obtain redress for infringement, you must prove that there's a goodwill, misrepresentation, and that you suffer damage. In order to obtain redress for infringement, you must prove that use of identical or similar mark in relation to identical or similar goods or there is a likelihood of confusion. In relation to fees, uh, trademark is registration fees payable in two stages. So upon completion, there's the first, the first phase, 7,800 application fee includes payment for the first class. And if it is that you have an additional class, then you will pay an additional 2,200 for that class. Now upon acceptance of the mark and registration, 2,200 for advertising the mark in the trademark journal and a further 7,800 for registration. The procedure for the trademark um, application, so applicants complete the TM1 and they have the applicant's name and address, statement of goods or services in relation to which they, whichever classification, a representation of the trademark, 
similar to when we're speaking about design, you have to have a representation of the design and examination by the by JIPO, published in the JIPO TM journal, period for observation, opposition, and then go to registration. So it is really important um, for creators to protect their IP rights and to consider IP issues in developing their businesses and to take sufficient measures to ensure that they protect their IP rights and do not infringe the rights of others. Uh, so that's pretty much an overview of the general IP areas. And as it relates to registration, as I mentioned earlier, for copyright, we have the voluntary registration service that we urge you to access, which is quite reasonable in terms of uh, registration. One thousand dollars application fee plus um, other categories of fee. All our fees, all our rates are on our websites. So if it is that you want further information on any of the fee categories, you can always call us at JIPO and we'll be happy to guide you through the process. We'll be happy to give you all the information as it relates to any fees that you may need that may be applicable to you. And we'll guide you also in terms of whether, guide you in terms of whatever aspect of intellectual property rights that you want to protect. Janine, over to you. Thank you, Chantal. So now we will be opening for some dialogue. I realized that um, Ava Marie had posed a question and um, Mr. Spence had answered, but let me, Mr. Dawson, sorry, answered, but let me just share it for the rest of the persons in the room. So the question was, why does the design registration only last for 15 years? And I think the response was that that is what is covered under the Design Act. Um, but I also had um, a question on that because I noticed, um, Chantal, that you said it was not renewable. Did I get that right? Yes. So. Because you want to create, you want to encourage persons to be creative, right? And you don't want to, after 15 years, you want persons to come up with new ideas, new creations. So it just lasts for that period. And that is what the legislation provides for. So. So I designed my slippers. Um, try and know that I have to come up with some new designs. Yes, yes. Yeah. We are encouraging the creativity. We are encouraging that, that creative juice and creative energy. And so we want persons to always be there creative and think outside the box. Right? So we encourage right. that creativity. Okay. So when you delivered your poem earlier, I noticed that you had written your name as the author and you had a little copyright symbol. They had right. some features on the, on the document. Let me see if I can bring it back. Features on the document. Let's see yes, where so we're talking name, about. The trademark. The copyright. Let me bring it back to the. I think it, it would be further up. Further up. It was maybe like about the third but early. Oh, here we go. There we go. That slide? Well, we, we're not seeing it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me share your screen. Still not seeing? No. Seeing the end of the slideshow in the end all right let me stop what i wanted to know was share. when what i wanted to know in the meantime while you get that up was if that is something you have to to, to come into jaipur to register to be able to use that so you have the copyright symbol there you the see uh, no cop right i see what you're saying but copyright is automatic so okay. there's no formal um registration this what i have here is not even required so as is so you wait, wait this morning and you wrote a poem you receive automatic protection because jamaica is a part to the burn convention for the protection of literary and artistic work and it provides that automatic protection to um creators of works 
that is that is what I wanted to get across but, because um, right. But we do right. But we do offer a voluntary registration service at Jaipo, and when when that service is accessed, so an application form is required. So an application form and a declaration form. So in the event that, say for instance, you are registering music with us and you have one to 15 music, you'd be required to complete one application form and then 15 declaration form declaring that you are the author and or the owner of in those individual, each individual songs that you will be submitting to us. Also, you'd have to submit to us a copy of all of those songs as well. And we process a reasonable fee, which would be $2,000 for the one to 15 category in terms of music, $2,000. And um, a copy of an ID as well, so we can identify the person who is claiming authorship and or ownership of the work. And uh, within six weeks, the person receives a certificate, which is see, who has a JIPO seal, has a registration number, the name of the work, and the name of the individual who created yeah. the work. Okay. I'm seeing somebody saying that they have no audio. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, so we have another question here. In total, is it $20,000 to register the trademark? Yes. When a trademark is registered in Jamaica, does it hold internationally? For, no, it, be, it, would, it would be different. So for each, if you have to register your mark separately for different countries, different countries. So if you want protection in Jamaica, register in Jamaica, or protection in mean, another country, you register separately. For copyright though, as it relates to copyright, uh, once your work is, the, co the country is covered under the category recognized under the Berne Convention, you receive protection in those countries as well, separate and apart from the United States, which you have to register with the, the Library of Congress in US. But for copyright, so copyright is different from trademark in terms of the registration. So the trademark speaks to the use of the actual logo and marks and so marks, on, while the copyright yeah, is right. the content and so on. Right, great, okay. awesome. You know, you, you know it, man, Jenny. <laughs> hey, I'm giving an A this morning for uh, very, Thank you. Very good. And if it is that persons have like business plan, because I know many persons might have a business plan and they want to register that as well with their business, they, that mm -hmm. is the, the aspect would be copyright. But in terms of the, so for the business, there are a number of IP rights that may arise. So your business plan, register on the copyright, your logo, the name of your business, would be under trademark. Okay. Another question. Could you speak more about protection of artwork and designs in the virtual space? Considering that, I mean, you know, with COVID, a lot of persons have sought to go online. And I know that right. intellectual property is a major concern where that is. Okay. So. When, when I was speaking earlier in terms of economic rights, I did say one of the rights of the owner is to make the work available on the internet are on demand. So as a copyright owner of a work, you have the right to, to use your work in whatever way, whatever manner that you want to use your work. Um, as it relates to uh, your artistic work, as I said earlier, once it is that your work is created, it receives automatic protection. So you're automatically protected. Right. So once you did draw something, paint something, whatever of an artistic nature, as the definition I gave earlier, you would have received that automatic protection. So you are free to put your work on a virtual space, but uh, we always encourage that you, you register. I mean, it's optional, but at least you have some evidence to prove that, hey, this is my work, as opposed to uh, rel relying on saying, okay, I'm waiting to see who can prove a better evidence to say it is their work. There's also the poor man's copyright system that I should mention where so even though at Jaipur we have offered the voluntary registration system service where we'll encourage everybody to access this service that we offer, I'm also obliged to say that there's also the poor man's copyright where work to, and you can put your work in a self-contained envelope, you take it to the post office, post it by registered mail to yourself and you keep that envelope sealed and in the event that there is a claim that it, someone is claiming that it is their work, then you can take the envelope to court and produce that seal envelope that is now open in court to say that this is my work. Okay, I think Herman, you were um, also having something to add. Yes, thank you, Janine. Good morning, everyone. Uh, 
well done, Chantal. Enjoyed your presentation. Uh, Thanks, everyone. I just wanted to. There was a question that was asked in relation to the cost for registration. I just wanted to uh, make it a little bit clearer in the in fact that once you have a trademark to register, there is a set of classes, a total of 45 classes, where each class contains a different set of goods or services. So to register any trademark in just one class, the total fee would be 17,800, and then you would pay 2,200 for every additional class. Right. So it can, go, it can increase based on the number of classes that you include in your, in your application. So the minimum cost, which can be only in one class is 17,800. So if you're registering your trademark for jewelry, we, we noticed that Chantal did a presentation of jewelry. So if you have a logo that you plan to put on your jewelry, the total cost for the jewelry class will be $17,800. If that same trademark is to be used for clothing, clothing fall is in, an, in another class, so that would be another $2,200. So the cost goes up based on the number of classes that you include in your application, but the minimum cost is $17,800 in total for registration. If I also may add, I noticed Janine was asking a question about the, the symbol that Chantal had on her poem. Okay, we okay. get that question a lot. Uh, persons may ask us, how do I put this symbol on my work? If you go in Microsoft Word and you type the open bracket, you type the letter C and then you close the bracket, Microsoft Word automatically forms a copyright symbol. So it is something that you as the author creator would put on. Mr. Dawson, are you still there? I think we may have. Right, so I think you may have lost him a, a, a little bit because I, I think his son went. But he was just mentioning in terms of how you could get that C on your work. But as I had um, said, you know, even I mean, many persons want to have that C to say, oh, yes, I have it on my work and excited for that. Uh, and they can also insert symbol and they can use that. But as I said, there's really no formal requirement for that to be there. I do notice too that on social media, um, especially for like our poets and so on, when they have created a poem and they would have posted it, um, persons are going to continuously share it. So it's also another way to get their brand name out there. So I would encourage them to still at least put the, the name as the author. The name, right. 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 And um, because it's going into, uh, into the public domain. And so, right. and so you want to be identified as the author of that work and the owner of the work. But just to make it clear that it's really uh, not you can still a challenge it. or a requirement. Right. It's not really a requirement for, it, for, it, for you to have it. Mm -hmm. But uh, persons are encouraged to, to put that on their work as well. As again, to identify that work to you, right? That you're the, you the author or the creator of the work. And so just a little bit um, following up, Chantal, on the question regarding artwork, because I know we had a client recently who um, wanted to give, um, allow permission for a company to use the artwork in a campaign that they were going to be doing and wanted to really understand um, what that entailed, what, what were some of the things that they needed to do to ensure that they were acknowledged as the artist and things of that nature. Is there anything else you can add or advise to those okay, in Okay, no problem. In relation to that, no. So uh, the author and owner of the work can be different. So because I can create, I am the author, so I create that design, right? Or create that artwork. Sorry, so I create that artwork. I am the author of the work, but I don't necessarily have to be the copyright owner of the work. Right. So say for instance, well, for example, I am I work here at Jaipo. So whatever I create within the course of employment would be automatically I am the author, but the owner is a general company. No, so from an individual standpoint, a person of that nature who did that could always create a contract to say what rights they're given to the person who they're selling that to. Is it that they're selling them for them to use for exclusive or for whatever purpose? So contract law comes into play when we think about that in terms of you 
giving it over? Are you preparing it to say, okay, I'm the author, but then I'm, you are going to have all the ownership in the work, so you still have the right to use the work in whatever shape and form that you desire to use the work? Okay, so if I'm understanding, if I have a, a piece of artwork and I want to give a company authorization to use it, I should um, ensure that I have a contract right, articulating who, are the, who is the owner, who is this and that. Okay. The author so it speaks the terms and the conditions upon which you know, the work can be used and who is the, specifying the author and the owner. And is that something that I could come into Jaipur to get assistance with? Uh, we can <laughs> we can guide at a, uh, we can guide you to the process and i think um we can also uh, discuss with um the heads of a, a reasonable cost but we can guide the process in terms of you know generally a simple contract okay so if a photographer takes a picture to say of say a mural in a public place can that image be copyrighted by the photographer Right, so the photographer is the person who is the person taking the picture is considered to be the author of the work and so that person considered to be the owner of the work. So a person taking a photograph, the author of that work is the person taking the photograph. So yes, the photographer can be considered to be the author of that work. Okay. I'm presently writing prayers that have that I have created myself. Can I use Bible verses as references and still claim it as my intellectual property? Yes, you can. Uh, the King James Version of the Bible, that's in the public domain. And by public domain, I mean that you have, everyone has access to use the work. So it is no longer, remember earlier I said that copyright um, protection for the first category, literary, musical, dramatic, and artistic work lasts for 95 years. Well, as for the life of the author and 95 years after death. So for that category, uh, in terms of the, using the Bible verse and the scriptures, the King James Version is in the public domain. So it means that the copyright term in that work would have expired. So the King James Version, for sure, you can use that. And for the other versions, I think there is a limit up to the number of verses that you can use or make reference to. But for the King James Version, you're free to use whatever scriptures you want and your work will be um, protected. Uh, copyright protects the original expression of ideas, so it doesn't want to limit an individual because a number of persons may want to write, um, say for instance, a person may want to write about the blue cup, but we all have different versions of that cup. And so copyright is here to protect that original expression of the idea. We don't want to restrict persons from saying, hey, okay, I can't use this or I can't um, speak on this because someone else has written on it. I mean, a number of persons have made reference to Psalms 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd I shall want. But another version, another person's interpretation of that scripture, that original expression will be different from another. Different. My expression will be different from Janine's expression and understanding of that very same um, verse. And so, uh, Copyright is therefore to encourage that original expression. So to answer your question, sure, you can go ahead. It will be your work and be protected. Okay, so there is a question here. I'm not sure if it was covered already. What is the cost of trademarking a logo and formula for a product? Right, as the same, it was covered. And Mr. Dawson had mentioned too earlier, the minimum cost would be 17800 for additional classes, the, the cost um, will go up. And by classes... So I guess what that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'm just thinking here that, um, you know, just based on my experience with some of our clients, that even though your original concept or the thought in using the design may just be, say, on a T-shirt or something, if by any chance you have the intention to go into other areas, so maybe woodcraft right. or so you probably should think real long and hard about the classes oh, that you want to to add your work on you know the po yeah right. the possible classes that you'd want to to, to go into um, some area yeah the original scenes. can the owner of the painting uh, also be? seeing another question janine from mm -hmm. samaria Boden. Mm -hmm. Boden. right and she's saying, can the owner of the painting make prints and those prints? Right. So as the owner of any of uh, work for original paintings, you will fall within that category, protected as artistic work. 
And so, yes, you can make uh, prints and you can also sell those prints because as the copyright owner of that work, you have an economic right, economic right to copy the work, distribute the work, broadcast the work, but in this case, it would be copy the work and issue the work. And for your paintings, it can be covered, it's covered under the artistic um, aspect of copyright category, so it'd be artistic work. Okay. Now, earlier you had mentioned something about registering um, when you talked about trademarks and business names and so on. I know oftentimes there are, there are persons who may be confusing, you know, the company name that they're incorporated with versus the logo versus the, the acronym. There are so many different formats of what we have for identity. I'm not okay. sure if you could just kind of go through that a little. Okay, certainly understand. So in relation to a company, many persons uh, would, as you rightfully said, will, will have a little bit of a confusion. We always recommend, so persons would ask whether company's office is one and the same as JIPO, and the answer is no. So you can register your business at JIPO at um, company's office, sorry, and then the name of your business or company, whatever your name is, so if your name is uh, Blue Slippers or Pink Blue, that is covered as a trademark, can register a trademark at JIPO. You may have a little logo beside that Blue Slippers that can also be registered, right? And as I said before, the the trademark could be a combination of letters, words, symbols, num numerals, and all of that. So the difference is company's office, you're registering your business or your company. And JIPO, you're registering the name of the company and whatever logo that you have. Samira has a follow-up question. Are you saying that Are the buyer of the original painting will be allowed to gain monetary benefits from prints of a painting I sell them? Yes, most definitely. If this is your original work and this is that you are printing it, all the money is, remember, this is your creation, no. And no, so I think she's asking if, if a company, um, what's the word, commissioned an, art, an artwork and she's the, so she's the author and she's selling the, the artwork to a company. Can that company do prints? Are they allowed to do replications of that artwork that she has done for them? Okay, so she's commissioned to do a particular work. Let's get a reiterating to, to be sure I understand what she's asking. Okay, so the author of the work would be, so she's the one that created the print. So she's considered to be the author and the owner of the work. So unless there is a contract to the contrary to say that the ownership of the work now goes to the company, she can always reproduce that work and distribute that work to others. So even though persons usually come and say, but I pay for it, it doesn't matter. The creator or the author of the work still is considered to be the copyright owner of the work. So even, even if it's being paid for, the person who creates it is considered to be the owner of that work. Okay, Samira, you can, so, you can so, let us know if your question is answered. If you're clear, right. Mm -hmm. um, earlier you mentioned that if the photographer takes a photo, and, and guys, you can actually um, indicate that you have a question and we can unmute your mics if you, right. if you wish to do so. Um, earlier you Samira mentioned that, respond that she understood, okay. 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 Um, if the photographer takes a photo, he is considered... The author of that image, which means he would be. Is this person explaining? I lost. Okay. Let me see if I can understand what has been asked. Earlier, you mentioned that if the photographer takes up photo, he is considered the author of that image, right? Which means he would be able to make prints and sell, etc. In the event that he takes a photo of a painting that is under copyright, how would that work? in that event, the person who created them to make prints and sell. I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, the person who is taking the photograph is considered to be the author of the work. Uh, I can make 
mention of when, uh, in terms of incidental inclusion, uh, I don't think it's probably relevant to mention that. So let me not even touch into that. Uh, but in relation to, I'm really trying to interpret what she's asking. So in the event that the fourth, in the event, or, or she could just, um, we could just, she could just raise her hand and be on mute, right? I think there's a question. Um, can say again. Barbara Philibert Allen, I am trying to unmute your mic. So if you could go ahead and do. Okay, go ahead with your question. Yes. Good morning. I apologize for being late. Um, one of Hi. my questions Hi. is um, we have an original um, logo. So it was created in house and everything. Now I want okay. to also not use it for our as our business logo. I want to be able to put it on t-shirts, um, cups, and other such novelties to promote right. our brand. Would I have to copyright that as well as trademark it? I'm not sure. That would be that would be since you mentioned logos, that would be trademark. Unless it is that you have a business plan and your business plan speaks to uh, whatever image you have and you they do detail that the business plan aspect will be covered on a copyright, but as it relates to your logo uh, and your name of the business, that would be trademark. So different okay. intellectual property rights can exist with one work. Okay, so the logo, the picture of my logo. I can just still, even because it is trademark, I can then turn around and put it on t-shirts, uniforms, and things like that. That's what I want to right. know. Right, remember. A copy right, of you're able to do. I'm sorry, go on. Right, you're able to do that. You're able to do that. Excellent. All right, so I don't have to do copyright and trademark. No, you can do the trademark aspect. Since you're talking about logo, so trademark would cover the logo, and uh, the name of the right and copyright. If it is a business plan, an extensive business plan, you want to des describe your business and whatever whole different aspect of business, then that would be copyright. All right. I thank you very much. I have one other question, if you don't mind. Oh, you're welcome. Um. Good morning. Um. I'm a. I'm writing poetry, and I right. I want to post it online. So how can I make sure that my my poetry isn't um, copied and without my knowledge, not without my knowledge, but without um, proper, without being accredited to me. Okay, so you said that you're writing poetry and it's online. Do you have a website? Uh, no, not a website, Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Okay. So as we mentioned earlier, it would be nice if you could put that, this copyright symbol on your work. As we said, copyright is automatic. So once your work is created, it receives automatic protection. So you're automatically protected, but we also um, offer the voluntary registration service at JIPO where you can deposit your work with us, your poems. So in the event that someone is using your work for anything that does not fall within the ambit of fair use, which is for educational purposes, research, then you can you know, bring a claim for infringement of that work. And when you register with us at JIPO, you'd receive a certificate, uh, which again will be additional proof or evidence of ownership of the work. Okay. So I have to do I have to um I have to bring in each separate work or is it just a blanket? But we have different class, different categories. So if you have like one to ten, so one to ten set of work, different class, that's one thousand five hundred, uh eleven to Second category is uh, $2,000. So we have all the, 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 fee, the fee schedules on our website. And if it is that you want further information in terms of different categories, but I know the first category is between one to 10, $1,500 for poems. And the second category is $2,000, which, which, which um, covers a more extensive category of works. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We have another here question are... here by Paige. Um, as a candle maker, can the name of my candles be copyrighted or trademarked? Which one, which one protects the name of the candle? Oh, the name of the candle, that would be trademark. When you're thinking about just the name, that would be trademark. In terms of the general, um, if there are any designs on the candle, that can be, that would be designed. 
the candle itself, design of the candle that's designed, you take a photograph of the candle, that would be copyright. So we have copyright, trademark, and design in that first very one question that you asked. So again, the option is yours. So you can always explore when you call, when you contact us and when you come into office, you can determine which which um, IP right you'd want to utilize. But I would suggest um, you can go directly to trademark for this aspect. But as I said, the intellectual property rights are interconnected. So, but for this specifically, in terms of your name, it would definitely be trademark. Okay. And I saw where Ava was trying to get clarification again on the 15 year non-renewable design. Right. Um, would that mean that the person could use the textile design? And I think they said yes, because we want to encourage yes. innovation and creation and continuously. Right, after that um, period. Yeah. 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 And um, Mr. Dawson also added a comment here. Responded, right. Right. So please note that a trademark registered in Jamaica is only protected in Jamaica for protection in other countries. The trademark must be registered in each of those countries the that country. you intend to right. protect it. Okay. Right. right. Like I think that was asked earlier and was addressed, but I think Mr. Lawson was bumped off by that time. Right. Thanks, Mr. Lawson. So I, if I copyright my inspirational quotes in English, is it also copyrighted in other language automatically? other languages automatically when it is translated in terms of quotes uh copyright doesn't um protect quotes like quotes phrases process procedures uh if it is that there is more to the quotes like more of an expression of the quotes than just like a one line then um yeah sure you receive that automatic protection in any language uh, it, it depends on if it is that country is covered under bur the Berne Convention. If it's listed under the Berne Convention, if those persons are party to the Berne Convention, yes, they will receive that automatic protection. And yes, in any language. Okay. So, where's the Where could they find a list of the countries under the Berne Convention? Is that right, on your so they can be Right, so they can visit our website and um, on the section that deals with treaties, they can look at all the treaties that we are party to. And I believe that there is a listing of all the countries that are, are signature to um, the Berne Convention. Or they can visit the World Intellectual Property Organization website, that's WIPO, and they, they can always look for the Berne Convention and they'll be able to see members who are party to those treaties or to other treaties that they may be interested in looking at. Okay. We have a number of clients that have been asking um, as they transition to go onto online platforms and things of that nature. There are quite a number of questions surrounding the, the information on the website. So they are not registered in those countries, but they are building a website and they would have put up their trademarks and stuff online. They would have posted images of their products and things of that nature. What would you advise? a client that is transitioning from say just being a producer to going online what are some of the things that you would okay. say so I, okay so i would you use the word advise but we would i would prefer to use the word recommend <laughs> so my, <laughs> right i don't want to provide any legal advice i'll make recommendations so i would recommend that in relation to websites that at the bottom of the website, like each page, they have that copyright symbol as well as the, the year and as well as the, the name or of the business or whatever they are. So each, each uh, different section of the website will have that. And whenever our work is updated on the website, so if it is that they add something new, or say for instance for 2019 and they move in 2020, you change again if you add something new. So say for instance, in 2015, I started my business and I uploaded my website and all the works I've done there is just for, for the period of in 2015. Then I can just leave it at that. Some persons 
each year they change the same law, but I recommend that if it's that you're adding new information to it, then you can put it. And say, for instance, you start from 2015, you can put between the periods 2015 to 2020. So you're showing that protection for all the works on the website started from 2015 to 2020. So that is one way in which you can go about doing that. And again, it's, it's, it's always a very difficult concept to, un, um, to grapple with or for persons to understand because people can't really grasp the knowledge or, or to, to really come to grips to say, this thing is automatic. So once I create my work, it's automatic. So that's probably one of the issues that we encounter all the time for persons understanding the automatic nature of copyright, which is very powerful because the purpose of this is really to encourage this creativeness and for persons to be creative. Uh, so, yeah, that would, that would be my, my recommendation to ensure that on their website they have the year in terms of the first work that was uploaded and to the current work in terms of the last work that was posted on their website. And to all, also, if you want evidence and like you want proof, this is where you come. You come to JIPO and you can do your um, voluntary registration of that copyright. In the work and it is that it is anything dealing with any other aspect of ip rights the different ip eras trademarks guys designs things. and how do people um engage with jaipo chantal do they just turn up at your doors do they call i start okay and so how do i contact you if i want to ask further questions things like that okay so if it is that you want further questions you can always contact us at 946-1300 Right, that's 946-1300. You can always visit our website at www.jipo.gov.jm. Uh, you can send us an email at info at jipo.gov.jm. Uh, because of COVID, we actually limiting the number of persons that we have in house. So many persons have been accessing our online services. So persons have contacted us. Um, uh, phone, telephone, computer application and declaration forms submit their works to us and we accept those. So if it is that you don't have to, oh, somebody's asking to add the contacts in the chat, so I'm going to just do that in the meantime. So if it is that you don't have to necessarily, don't necessarily have to come into office up until the time when you're actually collecting the, uh, your certificates. So I'm just going to go ahead now and put the contact number in the chat. That's 946-1300. Or info at jipo.gov.jm or 876-927-6744 or 876-618. One six eight one. All right, so okay. So, so we painter, have another question here. Okay, right. sure. So if a painter adopts every feature of a photograph and say exchange a man, I guess modifies a photograph and does a painting from a photograph, can the photographer make a claim for infringement? Yes, most certainly, because you're making a modification, that's actually a breach of the moral rights, because the moral right says not have your work treated in a derogatory manner. If it is that I like my work a certain way, so if I like to draw, let me just add, well, just putting it out there, I really can't draw. So just to demonstrate, I like my stick man this way, probably seeing my screen with the stick man. All right, see my video, right? So if I like my stickman this way and you decide that you want to know, make my, stick, my stickman very creative and add more to it, put on fingers and shoes and all of that, you're changing the nature of my work. And so that is considered to be an infringement because it's no concept of derogatory. So even in your mind, you may be thinking, oh, but I'm making an improvement of the work. No, you cannot do that. So as is a person creates their work, that is their creation. That is their expre original expression of how they feel. So once you go ahead and now modify someone's work without their permission, then you'll be considered to have infringed their copyright in the work. 
Okay, thank you. An important comment here. I know that persons were a bit um, flabbergasted by the design after limiting them to just 15 years. Okay. However, um, I see a recommendation here by Mr. Dawson that the design could right. also be trademarked. And I suppose, what was, the, what was right. the, the period of limitation for the trademark? 10 years. And it's renewable. So it's renewed it renew every, ten, every 10 years. So 10 years and renew indefinitely. So if they fail to the, renew um, it, if they fail to renew the trademark and somebody, the seat, that's it. <laughs> Dog name your supper, as Jamaicans would say. Um, so I want to thank you, Chantal, for, for giving us some insights. I mean, it's really, it's never going to be, we're never going to be able to understand what you said in school for years and years and years to learn in an in an hour or two hour but it really was supposed to um get persons comfortable with the conversation right. about intellectual property one of the right. features that, that was noted when the policy was being developed was that quite a number of gift and craft items do not have a trademark and so they are produced, yes, they do the carvings and everything, and they are displayed in the stores and everything, but there is no, maybe there might be a signature. I don't know if a signature could be a trademark, but it's certainly not, not officially registered as a trademark. And so um, persons have been complaining about replication of their work and not being able to challenge it. And certainly we want to encourage persons to look at intellectual property as a means of protecting their creativity and, and, and protecting the value of their work and so on. Um, also, we, we want to encourage persons to really get comfortable with contacting Jaipo and asking as many questions as possible. We know that it can be daunting. Um, I know that anytime we talk to persons about getting a logo and, and getting it registered, it seems like a mo I don't know why. I don't know why. It's but not it's a mountain. Like it's not a mountain. a monster or something. <laughs> no, it isn't. And, and we have a very receptive um, staff at Jaipur, very welcoming, very not because I work here, but just to be honest, they're very receptive. Um, I'm in copyright, so I can't speak to the <laughs> trademark. And, and, and at so JPBC, we are constantly on the phone with everybody there. So we ourselves know yeah. that, you know, it, no matter the question, no matter the concern, just take up the phone and call. It's very important yeah. for, you know, the creativity and the identity to be recognized. Um, yeah. One of the things I thought was very insightful, Chantal, was the... the the, the, the need for contracts to accompany these registrations because just having the registration and so on is not the sole protection and so in general our msmes and persons in the gift and craft and the creative industries need to get real close to our legal fraternity to ensure that they're using the, the different tools and and things out there and that when they go into negotiations they are affair with what is what are their rights and so i want to personally thank you chantal it was a it was a, you did you didn't quite with a little thing the poem the poem yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you the told poem me what like the creativity i'm, yes, I'm yes. like thank god I, I had that little poem <laughs> and i'm I, i'm sure my my digital marketing team will be publishing that poem to make sure because it has some <laughs> messaging in there that we want to get out and i was like yay yeah, so yeah, you're okay, gone. Good. You're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> I wanna thank Thanks the so much for having us. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us. And feel free to call us call us. Anybody online, feel free to call us um to ask any questions. We'll be happy to to guide you through the process. Any process at all, we'll be happy to guide you. Right. Thank you. I want to thank the Jaipur family for always being ready and willing to help us in getting the information out and getting our clients comfortable and informed as to what is needed. Um, we have some persons in the chat saying thank you, Chantal, and thank you to Jaipur for the information. It was well received. And we know that there's quite a lot more that we need to know. So we'll be engaging with you in other sessions that we find that need to have your expertise on board. Thank you to the participants. We are happy that 
you have gotten something from the session and remember that all our sessions are recorded and can be retrieved on our YouTube channel. And if you have any further questions, remember the numbers that were placed in the chat or just Google, Google, yeah. Google. Yes, Google. Google, Google <laughs> and contact the JIPO office for any further concerns or questions that you may have. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chantal. Thank you for having us. Thank you.